Okay. Hi, I'm Kim Wright, I'm Women Embracing the World, and today I have Chanel LaRue, and we are going to be talking all things content marketing. But before we get going, let's, um, Chanel, would you like to just introduce yourself, tell a little bit about your, about your business and what you do, and we would love to know a little bit about you, Chanel, the person. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Kim. I'm so grateful for your time. Um, so yes, my name is Chanel LaRue, and um, I own a company called Ninki, which um, quick Japanese lesson means popularity in Japanese. Um, I've been in the marketing industry for ooh, since I was 19 years old, and I'm 31 now. So maths is not my strong point, but that's how long I've been in the industry for. I've spent most of my career actually working for very large corporations and agencies all around the world. So I've worked in Buenos Aires and Argentina. I've worked in Cape Town, South Africa. I've worked in London. And I've worked on some pretty big client accounts, including people like the BBC and ESPN and The Economist. So I've worked with some pretty big businesses and in some pretty big businesses. Um, but I've left that life behind me now um, to focus more on building up a just a really lovely, um, you know, agile, dynamic agency that is um, Ninky. So I love working with small to medium sized businesses. I love to work in industries that uh, align with my values. Um, and I've had the business now for three years and it's, it's, it's gone very well. And it's great because I feel like I can make a real impact um, in people's lives by helping them market their business and connect with their potential customers. So that's a bit about my background and a little bit about what we do. Um, I'm a digital marketing strategist and um, my agency specializes in content marketing. So as you'll know, there's so much going on with marketing. There's SEM and SEO and Google ads mm -hmm. and videos and da, 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 da. we specialize in content marketing and that's what we're going to be talking a bit about today. That is what we're going to be talking about. And I think one of the things as business owners is that, you know, especially in those first couple of years, it's such a huge learning curve. Um, you know, we, we're learning about digital marketing. We're learning about being online, um, about SEO and what that even means and, and everything, everything about the online world. And, it, you know, it's constantly changing, algorithms change and so on. And I think out of necessity, most business owners start out doing it all themselves because of, of finances. But um, so let's just, and, and you know, what am I saying? And we get distracted, you know, we, 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 we set off to work on maybe our content and all of a sudden we'll see something pop up in social media contradicting what we've heard before. And then we're mm. sitting there sort of thinking, well, well, who do I believe? Where do I go? So let's see if we can, between with your expertise, if we can, you know, give give our women the facts and what they really need to know to ramp up hmm. their content and and make twenty twenty one a great year for their business. Absolutely, okay. and you make a good point, Kim. Because um, what I wanted to mention is the the most important thing you need to know before you launch your business marketing is spend time on finding the right person to do it because there are a lot of digital marketing gurus mm. and I can't stand it when people introduce me as a guru because for some reason that's just a negative thing in my mind because there's a lot of fly-by-night businesses that that don't do the right to so look at customer reviews ask for references it's okay to say do you have a business that you work with that I can get in touch with so before you launch into your own marketing um, just make sure that you do your research and you find the right, the right person for your business that you know you can trust. Mm -hmm. no, I, I agree. And, and um, just touching on that lightly as well, I think, you know, as you said, everybody can have the, the qualifications and the expertise, but they need to back it up. And as well as that, you need to have a healthy respect for each other and be able to work together because, you know, it's mm. your business. So, so you, if you, I think sometimes we need to just stop and think a bit about, is the person I'm looking at also aligned with me? Do they get my business and do they get, get me? Okay. Yeah. So, okay, we get straight into it? Yes. We, let's do it. <laughs> okay. So tell me, how important 
is it to have content mark or content as part of your marketing strategy? It's incredibly important. Um, now, even more so than ever, it's important because um, it's become harder to build trust and to get your product out there. Because a, a couple of years ago, um, you could just run an ad and people would see that ad and they'd go, oh, I'll just buy that product. But now the problem is that people don't buy products, they buy brands. And consumers are actually looking to build meaningful connections with brands. They don't just want a product, they want to build a relationship with someone who can solve a problem in their lives. And the way to build your brand is through content marketing. So I always say that ads help you be seen, but content helps you be chosen. Because if I see an ad for a product, but that brand hasn't tried to build a relationship with me, I'm less likely to actually engage with that ad because I don't know anything about that business or about that brand and whether their brand values align with me. So consumers are much smarter. A couple of years ago, you could put ads on Facebook and they would go absolutely gangbusters. But now the internet's just inundated with loads of ads from loads of different advertisers with loads of different products. And unless you've got a brand and a brand story that connects with people, because people will choose a brand that aligns with their personal values. Um, so, so it is incredibly important because content marketing is the thing that helps you build meaningful relationships with your customers. So very important. <laughs> On a scale from one to 10, I'd say, I'd say 10. <laughs> 10. And you, you're so true in what you're saying as well. The, the amount of um, paid advertising that's in our feeds these days is just mind blowing. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and on top of that, we've got, you know, the, most of us are still doing the organic content posting and things. And, and in amongst all of this, somehow we are trying to stand out. So you talked about consumers are wanting to connect with the brand or, or the person behind the brand. So how mm -hmm. does that, so take, give us some examples then on how that plays out, like, Say you maybe you're someone who does um, um, maybe maybe you are a service provider, for example, which which majority of the women in the group are. So if you're providing a service, um, how do you what content and you you're wanting to build a relationship with your audience and you're wanting to um, tell them about your brand and your brand story? How mm -hmm. do you do that? Yeah, so a lot of that comes down to um, understanding what is important to you as a person and what is your mission as a business. Um, so a lot of it comes down to your copy from a visual perspective. So I'd recommend spending a little bit of time fleshing out why you do what you do. What difference are you trying to make in people's lives? What is your mission? What, is your, what are your brand values? What, what's important to you? What differences do you want to make? Um, what changes are you trying to make in the world? What good are you trying to do for, do for the world? Um, it's it's understand you can't you can't kind of can't just go out and say, well, I offer Google AdWords and Facebook ads. You know that's that's saying the service that you offer, but helping people connect with your business is saying, you know, I give people a way to promote their business online so that they can create a successful future for them and their families then suddenly I'm interested because I see that this business is not just interested in taking my money and running my ads. They actually understand that behind my business is a person and behind my business is a family and they're willing to help me grow my business so that I can help my family. So it's, mm. it's all about storytelling. It's all about mm. getting really clear on what your, your company mission is. What are you actually trying to achieve? What change are you actually trying to make? And are you trying to make that change on a on global level, on a local level, on an industry level, on an individual level. Um, so I'd really encourage everyone to sit and get clarity on what their mission is, what their goals are, and what their values are, and then craft really beautiful, um, compelling copy that you can then put on your website, because that's the thing that helps you connect with people. It's not saying, oh, these are the services that I provide. It's about saying that this is the change that I can make in your life today so I would I would start I would start there for sure okay the changes that you you can make in someone's life 
And I know I, the question I asked was for service providers, but if you're um, providing products, it's people aren't really wanting to know. Well, they want to know a bit about the product and why why they should buy it, but they still are wanting to know about you. Is that mm. what you're saying? So. Yeah, they do, because there's still a purpose behind your, your product. So, mm. of course, they're going to want to know the product features. They're going to, they want to know the weight and the size of it and what it's made from and all that kind of stuff. Um, they want to know the benefits that that product can bring in their lives. But, um, for instance, I work with a client um, who she creates like plant-based collagen. So, um, you get animal collagen, which is basically just like cow hues that people they make into powder and then people eat it, but you can get collagen from plants that can get turned into powder and then you can drink that powder to keep mm. your collagen or whatever. So um, that's her product, but her brand is all about um, not, you know, anti-animal cruelty. Um, it's about uh, changing beauty standards. So rather than, you know, using lots of chemicals and harmful things on your skin, it's about, you know, putting things inside your body and focusing on what you're consuming versus putting lots of things on your skin. So changing um, the, the standards of the beauty industry, changing the expectations of what women should be. So that's what people buy into. That's what connects people. So mm. I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm anti um, animal cruelty. So that's mm. aligned with my values. And therefore, I've now made a connection with that brand. So obviously you'll talk about your product, but then it's the story around your product. You know, she she was actually um, Miss Universe, the lady who started this uh, Miss Miss Australia or Miss Universe or runner up or something like that. Okay. Um, and she was just so shocked at the horrific beauty standards and all of these mm. chemicals and products and things that they had to put on their skin before they went out on stage. And she just became so anti all of that. So that's the story behind her mm. business. So. You can have a product and you can talk about your product, but but mm. you've got to explain where it came from. Um, and that's that's what builds the connection. Okay, so on your web page, you can put more detail about your story. Mm. Um, but on social media, you know, usually short, concise works best. You can you can do the um, you know the occasional blog post. But unless things have changed, I'm still under the impression short and sweet um, posts work better than, than long content. Is that still true? Ha, huh. so that is a very, very good question, Kim. And it's something that is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. So as we know, um, the algorithm is, um, it, it, it changes all the time. Um, and it's really hard to know what it likes and what it doesn't mm -hmm. like because it's always changing. Um, I read an article not so long ago that very long co copy works better than very short copy mm. but then I've written some posts that are very long that have done okay and then I've had some posts that have got short copy that have done much better so the, the biggest piece of advice that I can give you is that we don't always know what the algorithm's up to but we can test test and test again so mm. continue to write a variety of different content short, long videos, mix it up, and then look at your insights and start to see what performs mm. best for you and what performs best for your audience. The algorithm might be that smart that they decide that if your audience is mostly, you know, younger people, they're not interested in reading long things. Mm. So in that case, you need to write something that's shorter. Or mm. if your demographic is interested in reading long things, then you know you can write long things. So the best thing to do is just to try different things and see see what works. Yeah. At the end of the day, I think whether you make it short or whether you make it long, the difference is in if you're providing value. So it's not necessarily always about the length. It's more about how valuable the information is that you're giving in that post that that, that helps the algorithm decide whether it's worth putting in front of more people or not. Yeah, that algorithm has so much control, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> mm, really? Does, does. Okay. So yeah, and look, I have to say, I, I I have noticed that myself that um, the short, it's the combination. It's the short post. It's the longer post. It's the, it's the videos. If you're comfortable doing videos, and and once again, you know, the content changes depending on the day of the week, the time. <laughs> I mean, the out with way that that reach works, and um on what your audience is doing as well, because, um, you know, at the moment, my stats are saying 1 p.m. for my business page is when my um, 
audience of money online. Well, this month, mm-hmm. that's not proving true at all because I would guess they're out there doing their Christmas shopping and things. So I, yeah, really, yeah. I really like the way you said to go look at your insights because I believe from the women that I speak to and of what that I have that I work with, one of the questions I ask them about it is their um, their metrics, and most of them just give you that. What do you mean? Like they don't even look at it, so they're just mm-hmm. shooting in the dark the whole time. So perhaps another conversation for another day is looking at our insights and measuring. I can tell you that we work with a lot of different industries that have a lot of different types of audiences and nine times out of 10, eight o'clock at night is the best time to post. And the reason why is because during the day, people are getting their kids ready for school, they're driving to work, then they're at work and then they have a short lunch break and then they're going to the gym and then they're sorting their kids out and then they're making dinner. Eight o'clock at night is when finally the kids are asleep, work is finished, gym is finished, dinner is finished, and they're sitting on the couch watching Netflix and sitting on their phone. So most, for the most part, between eight to 10 at night is the best time to post for any industry, generally. Of course, all of your insights, see what your insights say, mm. but that's a general trend that I've seen across the board with my clients in various industries. Now, now that's an interesting fact you've just raised um, because I suppose we're so indoctrinated with posting at during the daytime, you know, um, and posting three times a day and, you know, just, just that whole, um, I won't say misconception because most likely originally this is what you need to do. But as you said, the algorithm change and we need to become a little bit more savvy on how we work with the algorithm. So, Mm -hmm. so say you're someone then who's not looked at their insight, but they've just got into the habit of posting three times a day at, you know, a set time, but but you're now saying it may work better if they, if we do it in the evening. Yeah, I I think so. I mean, again, it's going to depend Mm. on your page and always look at your insights, but I, I would personally post once a day at a time where you're going to have a very engaged, active audience online, then post three times a day where you're going to miss your audience two out of those three times. So I think it is definitely a less is more approach, especially for Facebook. Mm -hmm. For Instagram, you can get away with posting three times a day because it's a very content hungry beast. Mm -hmm. Um, But Facebook, I would never post three times a day. Mm -hmm. I'd post three times a week and I'd always do it in the evening. Mm -hmm. And that's advice for any industry. Again, look at your insights Mm -hmm. caveat. But generally that's, you know, that's when people have the time to sit and scroll through Facebook. Yeah. And and if you're only needing to post once a day, that lightens the load. (laughs) It does. And I think, um, yeah, it takes the resentment away from Mm -hmm. doing it as well. Because if you feel like you have to post three times a day, you're just going to post nonsense because you're trying to hit that target of posting three times a day instead of saying well instead of posting three times a day with just near content I'm going to post once a day but I'm going to really think about what I'm going to post and make sure that whatever I'm writing really adds value to someone's life okay so then what what should we be posting so what I'd recommend that you do is you create categories of the types of posts that you want to do So you'll have one category that's like your brand values category. So you can talk about your brand values. So again, that comes back to brand values. What's important to you, how you service your customers, what makes you different, all of that kind of thing. Um, Then you can have like an industry category where you talk about industry news. Um, You can have just like a fun category where, because it doesn't always have to be about adding value. You can also just do some really fun social content. So I think about a couple of different categories that you can um, create. And I, I, can, I can share some more examples with you that you can you know, share with the group as well. Um, and even just having those categories allows you to come up with some ideas of things that you can post. So industry trends, industry insights, um, helpful tips for your, your audience. So I work with a guy who builds kitchens. Um, so the people who follow his page are very much interested in lifestyle content. So we post a lot of recipes, for instance. Um, So that's really, really helpful and useful because I'll be scrolling and I'll see, oh, that looks like a cool recipe that I might want to try for Christmas. So um, being helpful 
and um, being relevant is, is very, very important. So I don't think it really matters what you're posting um, as long as it's it's helpful and it's useful and it adds value, that's important. I mean, obviously, yeah, there's, there's, there's things like you can do videos and you can do, um, you can post articles, but um, whatever it is, as long as it's useful, interesting and relevant, like um, critique yourself as well, write a post, put it together, look at it and say, is, is this actually that valuable? Is it actually that, you know, does it add anything to the person's life? Even if it's teaching them how to make an egg an eggnog margarita for Christmas, hell, Ooh. that would that would be very useful to me. So, yeah, and just, me. just ask. Yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, just that's 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 how you know what you should post. If you look at what you've pulled together, and you don't think it's useful, then it's not it's it's not worth posting. So, okay, now you've got my grey matter really ticking over now. Chanel, thank you kindly, <laughs> I think. Sure. Um, <laughs> so I'm intrigued now because I get, you know, you're saying your client who has kitchens and their customers are very much lifestyle focused. So in that case, recipes to help them, you know, to improve their life by finding a recipe easily, that fits in with the brand's purpose. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does, because it's creating that outdoor lifestyle. But then how do they link that back to their business? If you're putting a recipe up, mm -hmm. how do you then link that to your, your brand? So if, I've, if, I post, um, if I post a recipe on my client's page um, and that post performs really well, so that let's say that gets a reach of 4,000 people, more people are seeing his brand name, his business name, because I'm, I'm the author of that piece of content. So that piece of content with the business name attached to it is getting in front of 4,000 people. So you might be scrolling through Facebook and you go, oh, that's, that's a recipe from who? Oh, Business X, haven't heard of them before. I wonder what they do. And they click into the page and they look and they go, oh, there's that recipe. Yeah, I might try that. And then they keep scrolling and they go, oh, they make nice kitchens. Oh, look at that one. Oh, honey, look at this kitchen. I think we should get one for Christmas. <laughs> and then that's okay. just that recipe, um, even though he's not even a chef, mm. has, has sparked a, a journey of inspiration and education and awareness for that brand that didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... So, so essentially, that's the hook. That's the hook to get them into, into your um, business page to investigate further and, and hopefully yes, they'll you know, move it's, over. It's basically yeah. brand awareness. So yeah. the chances of someone seeing a recipe and buying a kitchen, unlikely, especially yeah. in the short term. Yeah. But it's building that connection and that relationship with that person because I might be having a coffee with you, Kim, mm. and I'll say, oh, Kim, if you want to um, get amazing recipes, go check out Adelaide Outdoor Kitchen's Facebook page because they do these incredible recipes that you'll love. So it's it's all just about building that connection and raising awareness of the brand through content that is relevant and useful to somebody. Mm -hmm. So just to clarify this in case everybody's starting to think I'm going to post recipes, the if you still need, it needs to be appropriate for your business and your audience. So a recipe, yeah, say, exactly. yeah. So I was just thinking, maybe if you sold, um, if you maybe you sold fragrances, well, recipes may not really work for you in that, in that regard. But you'd find no, not, ne not necessarily. Mm. But it can at the same mm. time, you know. Like there's, you don't always have to post with some, you know, post something that's very tightly wound to your industry. And mm. um, you know, I'll post the posts that perform best for my business page. Um, are the ones that have nothing to do with marketing. They're inspirational quotes. They're yeah. stories about people. They're funny gifts. They're funny memes. Um, you know, so sometimes it doesn't even have to be linked. But it all comes back to your audience. Mm. So understanding your audience's demographic and understanding what it is that they're interested in. What are their fears and frustrations and needs and desires? Because if you understand those things, you can never go wrong because you understand what they're interested in, what they want to hear, what they're worried about, and then your content can be useful to them because you understand what they need help with, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
I said, so, oh, I'm, I don't know about anybody else, but I am thoroughly enjoying our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I know it probably sounds like it's really complicated, mm. but if you just strip it back down to basics and you just look at, look at your customers, who are my customers? My customers are females. They're between the ages of 20 to 25. They're interested in this and that. Um, you know, the things that they're worried about is this, this, and this, the things that they really want in their lives are this, this, and this, and, and talk about it on a human level, forget the digital marketing, forget the content marketing, forget Facebook, forget Instagram, just talk, think about the people who use your product. Once you understand that marketing becomes incredibly easy because your marketing always needs to start with a human. Mm. So don't think about your marketing and try, and then the human think about the human first. Um, I might mention actually that I've got a, a product called, it's called Uriday Social, and it's a calendar, a content calendar that has 365 days worth of social content ideas and prompts. So if you're like overwhelmed with what you're supposed to be posting on a daily basis, you just look at this calendar and it gives you prompts of what you can post about on that day. Um, so, so that's something that could be helpful to a business owner if they're like, I know I need to post content. I don't really know where I need to start. I don't have the time. And if I've got the time, I don't have the ideas. I can't afford to hire someone else. This content calendar will just give you all the prompts you need. And it tells you, get on, get on, get on Facebook Live, do a quick 20-minute video with three frequently asked questions that your customers often ask you. Done. So it just gives them those prompts to, to create mm -hmm. that content. Um, and then you can join a Facebook group that we have where I give loads of advice and tips and recommendations that you can benefit from throughout the year that you're using your calendar. So that might be a good place to start for some people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what ideas do you have to help people ramp up their content marketing for 2021? Sure. So my first um, uh, recommendation would be to decide what platform um, you're going to really focus on. The biggest mistake that people make is that they feel like they have to be everything to everyone and they have to be on all the platforms. So I need to be doing blogs and Twitter and Instagram and LinkedIn mm -hmm. and Facebook. And it's too much. It is too much. It's even too much for me. And that's what I do for a living. Um, so I would really just think about what platform you're really going to focus on in 2021 um, and how you would choose that is think about where your customers are. You might be spending all this time doing posting in LinkedIn when that's not even where your, your customer market, you know, that's not even where your target market is, or you might be posting like crazy on Instagram and that's not even where your target market is. So just pick two platforms that you're going to focus on and just make sure that they're relevant. Don't waste your time with Twitter because chances are it's probably not that relevant for your business or your customers. Um, so that would be my first tip. My second tip would be to get away from the computer, get away from the platforms, get away from the marketing, and just go back to thinking about your customers and what their needs, wants, frustrations, fears, and desires are, because that's going to set you up to create really, really awesome content once you've got that nailed down. I'd highly recommend you have Canva. I'm sure everyone knows that already. I'm sure everybody uses it. I'd highly recommend it. Um, and I, I, there's so many more tips that I can give, but I feel like those are probably the, the key tips that I want to give. Hashtags are important. Um, that requires a whole nother session probably. But I think ultimately it's, it's, it's getting clarity on your, your key messages and really understanding your, um, your, your, your audience. And like you said at the start, it, it, it is all trial and testing. You know, what, what may not work one day, it might just be a slight tweak and it, you might just have that post that's just gone, you know, it's just reached someone and it may convert for you as well. Um, exactly. Can we have a quick chat about call to actions? Yes, yes, for mm -hmm. sure. Okay. So um, your, post, your posts can include call to actions. They don't have to. Um, and I wouldn't recommend that every single post that you post has one. Mm -hmm. Generally in a post, you'll have like a hook, you'll add value, and then you'll have a call to action. Um, but people don't like being sold to, and that's not really the purpose of, of posting. Um, you're not supposed to sell, sell, sell. That's a big mistake that people make, is that they go onto their Facebook page and they constantly talk about themselves. 
Um, and that does not, Facebook does not like that. They, they want you to make it about them, not about you. Mm. Um, so going back to the call to actions, yes, you can have them, um, but I wouldn't recommend having them in every single post. Every single post. And, you know, that's, that's the other confusing thing, I, I think, too, because, you know, there's people where I've, I've listened to and they've said, so, you know, have a call to action or have a, um, a, a sell on every post, every post, you know, have a call to action. Um, and I've just never really known how to do it. Personally, I, I myself, I don't do that. I try after we do it once a week. But, but you're saying, you're actually saying not to use it on every post because, as you say, people, mm. you know, look at it like this. If you're watching TV and we've got commercial after commercial after commercial, which is always saying, buy me, buy me, buy me. We, we turn off, don't we? We just, our eyes oh, glaze sure. over and we, we just go and make a, a coffee or whatever we, we're wanting. And it's the same with um, our social media platforms. We just glaze over. Every time we see that call to action, we, if it's constantly in our faces, mm -hmm. we just keep, we just go we straight sure. past it. Which, yeah. which goes, which takes me back to what we were talking about at the beginning, which is the art of storytelling in your content mm -hmm. marketing. People don't like being sold to, but they, you know what they do like? They like stories. They like stories yeah. about real people with real problems that your product is solving. And if you can tell a really wonderful story about how your product is helping people, you don't need to say, buy me now, because you've already mm. explained why, you know, the value of the product through the story that you're telling. Mm. Um, and stories perform very, and when I say stories, I'm not talking about, you know, Instagram stories. I'm talking about telling a story about someone that you helped or um, painting a picture in people's minds um, and doing it in a way that evokes emotion because logic is not memorable, emotion is. And the only way that you can evoke emotion is through storytelling. So in your posts, focus on telling micro stories about your brand and about your business and about your background and about problems that you're solving with your product. And, and rather do that than say, this Justin, blah, 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 blah now. I don't know if you can hear that noise, but I've suddenly got someone out here doing something outside. <laughs> I can hear you, but that's all good, though. <laughs> it shows that we're actually, um, this is what happens. And we all, we, I think one of, the, <laughs> one of the good things about this year is that we've all gotten used to the fact that when you're working from home and you're doing a video, you get to see what really goes on because all the noises, all the, the knocks on the door, everything happens. <laughs> every little, every little thing. Little Naked thing. partner, dogs barking, kids crying, the whole <laughs> shebang. <laughs> so then just before we wind up, digital marketing strategy. Now, I know you touched on that um, a calendar to help with ideas and what to post, but how, how important is it to have a digital marketing strategy? It's very important because your digital marketing strategy is like your blueprint before you build a house. It's your plan before you, you launch. Like it's, it's people are so overwhelmed by all the different things you can do in digital marketing that they just sort of throw themselves at everything and then they get really overwhelmed and stressed mm. out. Um, but if you take a step back and you work on your strategy, as in what am I, how am I going to position myself in market? What are my key messages going to be? Where am I going to find my customers? How am I going to communicate to them? What offers am I going to bring to, their to bring to the table? Have your plan set. Um, and then it just helps you to get clarity on what platforms you're going to focus on and how you're going to be communicating on those platforms as well. Um, so it, it's really important. That is the foundation of your, of your marketing. So I can help with that as well. And I do it mostly in a consulting capacity because I do work with medium-sized businesses whose digital acumen is, is quite good. They don't necessarily want to hire an agency to do all their strategy. They just want to say, look, where do I start? What am I supposed to be doing? Like, I, I know this is what I'm trying to achieve, but how do I get there? And then I coach them through what they need to do to get there. Um, so I, I quite like that consulting approach because then they can learn, they can learn stuff that they can implement moving forward as well. So yeah, digital strategy is, is incredibly, incredibly important. Yeah. It also doesn't have to be Shantaram or War and Peace. It doesn't have to be a big fat strategy document that just sits and collects dust. 
Mm. You can just do even just a three month strategy to like yep. sink your teeth into it. Mm. Okay. No, that, um, so I guess too, the, the thing about uh, one of the things I think people put off having a strategy is because it, it does take time and you need to mm. schedule that time to, to do that. But once you've got it, you know, once you've mapped it out and you've mapped out your purpose and how you're going to get there, then all the hard work's done. And it's mm. a matter then of, yeah. um, of just, you know, of just doing um, posting consistently and then setting it up, setting a time aside at the end, somewhere in that three month cycle before the next three month cycle starts, setting aside some time to go back to your plan and map out or strategize what you're going to do in the next quarter. Mm, mm, absolutely yeah and I think because you've already got content from that first quarter there's a lot in that that you can repurpose so you're not starting from scratch or scratch each time so you've made an excellent point it's something that businesses forget to do all the time and even I forget to do it sometimes it is totally okay to recycle your content recycling is mm. good for the planet in general and it's very good for your marketing it'll save you so much time mm. I was constantly always trying to come up with these new ideas and I was like hang, hang on a sec if you've written a blog uh, well, if you've mm. if you've done a video, so this video, I will turn our conversation. I'll turn into a blog, mm. and then I'll turn that blog into lots of Facebook posts, and then I'll turn those Facebook posts into micro videos, and mm. then those micro videos might create more topics that I'll create another blog about. So you can totally recycle and repurpose your content. That is totally okay. Mm. Mm. And I think that comes back to having that strategy as well, because part of successful strategizing is looking at what you want to do, how you're going to get there, but at the resources, you know, what resources do you have on hand rather than mm -hmm. creating something new? So as you said, if you've got a blog, there is content for quite a few posts. So you, you're not, once again, you are saving yourself the time in creating new content by using what you have um, and you're just getting a little bit more savvy at the way you're, you're working. Mm, mm, absolutely okay. and you know like things like this where you can meet up and interview and chat to somebody mm. yeah and like I say turn that into a blog then turn that blog into Facebook post so yeah no it's recycle your content for sure you know I've loved our conversation I really have yeah thank you so much I hope, it, I hope it's useful um and I think like it's okay to feel overwhelmed by everything mm. um but just find people who you feel comfortable with to just be like okay I don't get it and mm. can you just help me work through it um and you know you can do some things on your own in some instances it's good to work with somebody else um and just because you can do it yourself it doesn't mean you should so just kind of just yeah mm. yeah you know yeah. I think you know no, um, I think that what you just said then about just because you can do it doesn't mean you, you need to do everything and you know sometimes finances may not permit you to have someone full time but you know um, with somebody like you on from a, on a consulting perspective you're you're getting the value just getting what you need as you need it and then when situations improve you can then invest more into having someone to guide you with your with your um, content mm -hmm. marketing or you know hire someone to do it for you and yeah, your business absolutely. becomes more successful. Mm. Okay, well, one last question. How yes. do people reach out to you? If somebody is sitting here thinking, oh, gosh, I really like what Chanel has been saying and I would like to have a, a chat with her and find out a bit more, how do they, keeping in mind we've got overseas people as well in our group, how do we, re how do we connect with Chanel? So um, some people will say Instagram, some people will say Facebook. Um, despite being a content marketer, I prefer the traditional email. Mm -hmm. So you can send me an email. Um, would you like me to give my email address? Yes, and then I'll put it in the, um, the comment. Sure. So my email address is Chanel, which is C-H-A-N-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, at Ninky Online, which is N-I-N-K-I. O N L I N E dot com. So Chanel at ninkyonline.com. I feel like I've just done a spelling bee. <laughs> Who can spell onomatopoeia? Um, so that's the best way to get in touch with me. And 
Um, I offer a 10 minute discovery call to just kind of see where you're at and what you might need help with. I do offer consulting that you can have for, you know, an hour or two hours or three hours um, where I can give you all of the tips and advice and, and information that you need to, to be self-sufficient in, in building out your own strategy or doing your own content marketing. Um, but yeah, I think with Christmas coming up, uh, you know, have a look at the Iriday social calendar. That might be something that will help you just ramp up your content with these daily prompts. I've also got some, uh, if you're doing Instagram stories, Instagram and Facebook stories, I've got some really fun Christmas story templates um, that I'm just giving away for free if you want to kind of decorate your social media. So I can give you a link to those as well. Okay, lovely. So so here we have it. We've um heard from Chanel LaRue um, on the importance of content marketing and I'm confident she's given you some tips that you might not have been so uh, aware of or and clarified some of those unknowns for you. So as you just as we said before feel free to reach out to Chanel via email and it's lovely to have had this conversation with you Chanel and I will well I know I'll speak to you again but just in case something happens, I wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. Thank Hopefully. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for everything that you do for my business. For those of you out there who don't know, Kim does my bookkeeping and she saves me like four hours a month that I would be spent crying at zero. So she's amazing <laughs> as well. I highly recommend her. So thank you so much for all you do, Kim. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Chanel. I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hang on, with the recording I want to stop, not the video, not the